always to me. And then so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so great to, to share my own experience and some um, thing we actually we develop in our own lab. And then so, well, yeah. afterwards, so after this kind of talk, so we hope to continue our relationship and also um, to make the collaboration with you so we can prolong our relationship further and further so we can develop the, the, the big project about this again. Okay. Then, yeah, um, the topic that I'm going to give you, uh, well, because so I have just a few days to prepare my own slide because then I'm also also quite busy with, with the stu uh, student staff also at my university at my university. So my topic will be related to the work we actually we achieve in our group. So the topic will be the examples of novel biomass derived absorbents and focus more a little bit on what actually influence the absorption efficiency. Okay. So thanks a lot for this banner. So uh, I'm actually in this picture so I look so handsome. I would say it's too handsome <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and actually look thinner than, than the real one. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for, for, for this kind of banner. So I like it a lot. So I share it to my wife and my uh, friend. Yeah, yeah. So and they, they like it too. Okay, so let's talk about why we need the SOP band. I'm sure that uh, in your university at UAI, so I think a lot of you are doing the research, including you, Fatima, so with the environment protection. So that means we try to uh, reduce the pollutant in, in, in the environment, right? Especially in the water. So because, so now we have, we face the problem a lot with the pollution in water. And then so we need the method with actually we can treat the water so we can have like uh, the, 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 the clean water yeah. because so nowadays, so many industry actually uh, release the toxic pollution into the water. And then so we, we, we could not drink, we could not consume the water we actually release directly from the industry and, and anymore. And I think so now uh, in, in Indonesia also have the same problem as in Thailand. So some, some days ago, um, one uh, factory in Thailand, so they actually are, uh, uh, have been in a big news in Thailand about uh, uh, releasing the toxic chemicals into the water. And the villager close by that factory could not use the water for doing anything. So they, they actually a farmer, so they could not use the water for, for, for that kind of um, agriculture or for planting, right? And this is the big problem and the government actually pay attention to, to this problem. So it seemed to be the old fashioned, still the same problem 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So they, they faced the problem of water pollution Nowadays, it's still the same. So they still face the problem of water pollution. So um, we should now, right now, try to get rid of the pollution or the, uh, or the, uh, from the water. Because so in the near future, if we lack the water, the clean water, so the people will die, not only with, with COVID-19, right? But we, we will lack the clean water to, to drink or to consume. And then so we need it urgently to, 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 to treat this problem. Okay, there are so many techniques so far to clean the water. Yeah. For example, the membrane filtration or just a simple one with the sedimentation, especially if you have something like a, the toxic metal, which actually can be precipitated easily using the base or acid. And the other one would be the adsorption. Okay. I will now focus on the adsorption. Why I choose the adsorption compared to the other method? 
because the assumption can be considered to be the symbol, to be high efficient, and actually it can minimum secondary contaminant. And talking about the price uh, compared to the, 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 the other method, so the cost of um, the operation for absorption is much cheaper than the other methods as well. So that's why it's quite, uh, still quite useful nowadays to use the absorption in terms of the big industry. Yeah. And this is how to show, um, I just want to show that, okay, if you have like a big plant, and if you talk about, okay, if we need the sedimentation or if we need the membrane filtration, so they, they will uh, take a lot of time to, to, to do the, all the treatment of the water. Yeah. But if we have the absorption so it can be convenient, it's uh, actually high performance and simple design. So we don't need to have like a mem mem membrane and we don't need to produce the membrane. We're actually quite complicated compared to the, prepared to, to, uh, the preparation of absorbent. On sedimentation, you have to wait for, for some few days, especially if you have quite a big plant, big um, pond of the uh, polluted water. So that means that absorption is still quite attractive in this case. But of course, I mean, if we talk about the absorption, so we need to be sure that um, the absorption or the, uh, or the material that we use to absorb the polluted um, contaminant um, in the water. And what actually should be to get the good absorption efficiency? So what we actually concern will be the two first part. That means we will be concerned first with the absorption capacity. So that means how much the absorbent molecule. So I talk about the absorbent and absorbent. Absorbent means the solid surface that can absorb the polluted molecules. The molecules which actually can be attached onto the absorbent, we call it absorbent. So that means the molecule will be attached on the surface of the adsorbate. And adsorption capacity means how much this kind of adsorbate molecule can be attached on or even inside the surface of the adsorbent. Yeah, this is the key. Usually it's shown in the term of um, weight per gram. Weight of what? Weight of the adsorbate molecule per weight of the adsorbent surface or in terms of amount of the absorbent molecule per the area or the weight of the absorbent. So that means if this value is quite high, so that means the absorbent will be so efficient, right? Okay. The other one which actually could be good and could be um, the main the main factor for, for the efficiency for the absorption will be the absorption kinetics. The absorption kinetics, if you learn about the kinetics, I'm sure that you, you learn quite a lot about kinetics. Kinetics talk about the time. Not only you have to um, get uh, as much as the polluted uh, uh, contaminant onto the surface of your absorbent, but you need also the time with actually quite small. So that means you need very fast time to remove all the contaminant in the water. So that means it concerns how fast the absorbent are attached to the absorbent surface. This is actually, uh, these are two big parameters that we usually, if you um, talk about, or if you do research for this kind of, um, Absorb, uh, absorption. These two parameters are the must that you must report always. The other one that people try to do is a kind of thermodynamics because if you want to know more about the mechanism, 
um, what kind of um, thermal param uh, thermodynamic parameter which actually co uh, can be concerned. For example, delta G, delta H, or delta S. Because sometimes if you increase temperature, if you know the process that can be endothermic reaction, so it can increase the temperature in your factory and then so you get more adsorption, for example, All right? Oh, sorry. Um, I missed something wrong. <laughs> um, I start to share screen again, okay? Okay, this one. Okay. There are so many adsorbents. Um, one thing would be silica, one thing would be methyl oxide. The polymer also can be the good adsorbent. And what I'm going to talk about today is carbon one. Yeah, the carbon can be carbon nanotube, graphene, or even porous carbon from wood, for example. And uh, porous carbon material. So I will focus more on porous carbon materials. Why we need porous carbon material compared to silica, to methane oxide, to polymer? Because so usually they contain high surface area. They have high internal porosity, and especially they have the chemical stability. And one thing about the porous carbon material, so they contain a lot of um, functionality. So if you learn about organic chemistry, you will see a lot of aromatic rings and actually the aromatic ring can be easily functionalized to get the other surfaces. For example, you can trap more oxygen groups or you can have more nitrogen group. You can have the heteroatom on, on the surface of your carbon. Compared to silica, compared to methane oxide, the carbon based on the organic chemistry. So you can easily modify the surface of the carbon. Yeah. So that means this is the good thing, uh, the, uh, one of good thing of the carbon. So because it's it easy to, to functionalize, all right? And of course, I mean, what we can get the carbon from. Yeah. So easily, so we can get from the biomass. And where do biomass come from? So we talk about Thailand, we talk about Indonesia. We have something the same in common, uh, which are, so we are agricultural countries, I would say. So uh, you produce a lot of uh, nat nata de coco, right? And then so in Thailand, so we also have a lot of, 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 of biomass. We actually generate from rice, from uh, many kind of plant, and then, okay, um, I, I, I think I, I don't make you hungry now, right? <laughs> okay, let's see here. So this is the slide that I show also in Indonesia some uh, two years ago. So we talk about nata de coco, we talk about the food. Of course, I mean, we produce the food. Yeah, we are the big country, we actually export the food a lot. And what we have left afterwards, so this is an example on, in my country. So we have rice, we have the corn, we have the sugar cane, yeah. And then so we produce a lot um, of product out of that. We produce rice, we actually, um, and we produce like a um, strat from corn, we produce sugar from sugar cane. And then so what is actually left afterward? So we have a lot of, um, con consider the price of this. Yeah. We can sell the sugar, we can sell the corn strat, we can sell the rice, but, um, with the low low price compared to the um, uh, uh, one big car, for example. So, so that, 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 that why our country needs something more to develop more. Yeah, we, let, let's say here, so we call it bioeconomy. So this is the one that uh, our own countries have. So, okay, we, we, we can't produce the car. We don't have the big company, big our, our own big company for cars production, but we have the bio things. Uh, we have the plants, we have the woods, we have the coconuts, we have the sugar cane, we have corn cob, we have the rice, and we call this bio economy. Okay, so we can use um, the overlap part or the biomass. We actually derive from this kind of thing to make 
something interesting. In this case, so I focus more on we can use it to make the adsorbent for, 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 for example. Okay, so we can turn the waste biomass that actually come from this agricultural product to some useful material. What, what we try to make is try to make carbon materials. Why we should this one as uh, the precursor for carbon materials? Because they contain a lot of the carbon content already. So that means easily turn them into the carbon so you get very high yield of the carbon absorbent afterwards. So that means it's quite interesting. And nowadays, so this kind of uh, waste biomass are really abundant. So easily to find, and then so you, you can get like a ton of, of them um, per month, for example. Okay, In motivation. Okay, let's talk about the absorbent come from biomass. So I am sure that you know about activated carbon. Yeah. So activated carbon is the one thing, one kind of good absorbent from carbon that you can produce by using carbonization um, coupled with activation. So in the activation process, you need something like uh, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, or phosphoric acid to be the activating agent. And so you need the high temperature to increase its surface area. So this method is really um, conventional, right? But you still need multi-step to do that. Yeah. And afterwards, so you get the low product yield. You will never get over than 20% if you go with high, high temperature. So, and um, afterwards, so the problem of this activity carbon, even it uh, uh, show the absorption efficiency quite high, but you still have the problem of, um, uh, uh, so to say, separate, it from the from the um, polluted water uh, or from the cleaned water afterwards. So that's why. So I I try in in our own group. So we try to introduce something which actually could be interesting. So that means the magnet, mag magnetic particles. So I'm sure that Fatima know know about this quite a lot because uh, you you are also working on this, right? <laughs> but but with your uh, uh, with your um, catalyst, okay. So we need it because so when 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 after complete absorption, so we can remove it quite easily, okay. So there are so many uh, publication uh, before um, my group published this work. So a lot of people try to make their carbon composite, carbon absorbent, which has the magnetic property inside. Why we need magnetic? And what, what magnetic influence absorption efficiency? Now I would say that I don't know. What the magnetic actually influence the absorption efficiency? Yeah. But I just know that in the fact that if we have the magnetic particle inside the absorb that carbon absorbent, you can easily separate it after absorption. So this is one thing I, I know about. But if we, you turn back to the previous slide that I talk about the absorption efficiency related to the absorption capacity or the absorption kinetics. The magnetic particles inside the carbon actually have so far have no influence on this. So that means we trap the magnetic particle only for the purpose of easy separation but nothing to do with absorption efficiency. Uh, but we will probably can try later that if we increase the magnetic particle inside, we might have some specific magnetic, car uh, so, sorry, magnetic particle inside our carbon matrix, which actually explode to outer surface and we can investigate later if this kind of magnetic particles really influence the absorption efficiency or not, right? Okay, there are so many um, uh, papers 
um, have public discount work so far, but no one really have investigated the effect of magnetic particles on the adsorption efficiency. They just talk about how fast they can remove the, um, the carbon adsorbent from the water. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I found that um, in the literature, so they have a um, uh, lot of disadvantages. For example, so they need multi-step to produce their own uh, magnetic carbon. Um, they need high temperature. Okay, and of course, I mean, uh, uh, concerning the chemical activation, they need a uh, um, high amount of harmful chemical, for example, the KOH or the phosphoric acid, which can be corrosive. So that's why we need the further development. So we need the simple short route for the preparation. We need lower temperature and we need the environmental friendly manner to produce our carbon, magnetic carbon composite. So that's why we choose the method so-called hydrothermal carbonization. Yeah. And after this uh, talk, so we can discuss more on the HTC. So it's quite interesting also to, to investigate. Okay. I, I will leave some question also, open question also to, to you all. And then so we can discuss on this. Okay. We choose this one. Why? Because so we need only water. Usually, so you have to do the pyrolysis, you, you need to use a high temperature up to um, at least um, 500 degrees Celsius up to 1000, for example. But in this case, so you have the closed system. You put your biomass into the things, the so-called the autoclave. Yeah, look like this. And in the closed system, so you put the water, you put your biomass into that, you need the mine condition. So the mine condition means, the mine condition means, so you need only 180 up to 250 uh, uh, degrees Celsius. You can a little bit go further than that. So you can go up to 400. It's, it depends on your autoclave or your reactor. So in this case, so you have no emission of CO2 release from the system because you have the closed system always, okay? This method considered to be the green process, all right? So because, so you, you have closed system, you need lower temperature, yeah. Okay, so I show you some example of, of uh, one of my publications so far. So we should one biomass to turn it into the carbon composite and plus also the magnetic inside. So we should sugarcane bagasse because so in our country, so we have this kind of, of uh, sugarcane bagasse a lot. And then so we can, um, in, in terms of chemistry, okay, it's co also contain uh, uh, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin, which can be the source of, uh, the good source of carbon precursor. And then so we, this is the example one. Why I straight here that the chemical functionality, we will see later what actually happened in, uh, in this work. So we simply mix things together. Uh, we start from um, uh, uh, grounded magasi mixed with iron 2 plus and T plus in a very um, low concentration of sodium hydroxide. We still need sodium hydroxide a little bit because we need to precipitate Fe2 and Fe3 to the magnetite phase or Fe3 or, or, or 4. And then so we, we put in the closed system of HTC, put it at 230 for 24 hours, and afterward just wash it. Sim simple. So you don't need to use the, the, the high temperature oven anyway I I anymore. And then so we, we try a lot with optimization. So we need to get the high yield, blah, 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 blah. And then so we check afterward, okay, we can really attach the iron particles into the sample. And our sample actually show the good magnetic properties. Okay, and we show from the VSM that, okay, our carbon um, uh, have the magnetic properties and can be easily separated using just, just, just by using the magnet, All right? And so we show in some characterization here that, okay, from the SEM EDX, so we show the mapping of the iron, we actually spread 
um, um, thoroughly and homogeneously around the, our carbon surface. And also from the XRD, so we found that we can um, achieve um, the FE304, which, which can be considered a good magnetic ones. And so we can entrap this into our carbon material. For further uh, uh, characterization with the TEM and SAED, so we found that we have the magnetic particles of this iron oxide of the magnetite in, in our carbon sample, okay? We, we don't talk about the, the surface area yet, right? So we, we just talk now about the characterization in, 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 in some detail, but I'm not going to, to, to into detail yet to the surface area. Yeah, I will show you why. Okay, and then so we investigate later. One thing that we care about this work is that our carbon, if you notice the oxygen content from the FPS technique that we actually used to investigate what happened to our carbon. So you will see that it contains a lot of oxygen. Yeah. The oxygen, okay, one part actually comes from the iron oxide. But if we already subtract the iron oxygen from iron oxide to only the oxygen from carbon, so you will see that more than 20% will be the oxygen which actually can be attached to the carbon surface. Why? This oxygen is quite important. Yeah. I will show you later here. Okay, this is the, like a scheme of the preparation. So you will see that we can achieve our good carbon. Okay. So my country, yeah, I think your country as well, so have faced the problem of that the cyclin. Uh, we actually, so now, uh, because, so we have like a kind of um, a cattle, right? And then, so we use the antibiotics, especially the tetacycrine. Uh, and, and the tetacycrine actually spread in the water. Yeah? So after the farmer actually wash their farm and so on, so it's released from the farm into the water. And when the people take it, or when the animal, the other kind of animal take it. So it, it can actually form kind of um, genetic effect. And then so it's really harmful to, to the environment in the long term. So we need to remove this. But we try to absorb by using our magnetic carbon to the tetracycline, to remove the tetracycline. Why we think that our material can absorb data cycling? So if you consider the structure of data cycling by itself, you will see that it contains a lot of oxygen functionality, right? Yeah, if you notice here, yeah, oxygen functionality. And this oxygen functionality is in the form of carbonyl group, carboxylic group, and hydroxy group. What happens if you, we have a lot of kind of this OH group in your asorbate molecule. So that means if you do interaction with the asorbate, which actually contains a lot of oxygen, you can do the hydrogen bonding. And not hydrogen bonding, which will be responsible for this case. If you consider the structure again of this tetracycline, you will see that you have also the aromatic one, right? You have the, uh, the aromatic one. Uh, you have a lot of aromatic here. So that means you can have the pi pi stacking effect. If you have the assault band, we actually contain the pi aromatic. So that means two things that can be responsible for the good absorption would be pi pi interaction and hydrogen bonding, right? So that's why I shoot this theta second as an example of the bad absorbate or the, or the pollutant. And then so we use our magnetic carbon composite that we prepare by easy method 
to do the absorption study in terms of both kinetics and equilibrium. So that means equilibrium means how much it can absorb. So if you see the right curve, uh, the curve on the right side here, okay, I think I have to clear something here, okay. Yeah, if you see here, this you talk about how much, and this is how fast, right? How much and how fast. These two things are the must that you have to report when you, when you write your paper or when you have to report it, how efficient your assortment would be. Uh, these are two things that you have to really report. Okay, you can obtain the value, for example, in my case, so I get the uh, maximum absorption capacity of around uh, 50 milligram per gram, right? Which actually not, not, not so big in my opinion. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, and how fast it can absorb, okay? In about two and a half hour, it already can absorb, um, total amount of the tetracycline cream in the, in the aqueous solution. Okay, let's move to the next line. What actually influence? And so we, we draw the mechanism of an absorption. If you can see here, so our um, obtained carbon, so contain the magnetic particle actually entrapped inside. We don't talk about FETO4 in terms of absorption at all. Why? Because it's trapped inside the carbon matrix. So they are not exposed to outside. So that means they have no place to interact with the adsorbed molecule like data in this case. But what actually influence the adsorption efficiency or adsorption interaction would be the functionality which actually come from the carbon surface itself. So that means if you have a lot of carboxylic group, hydroxy group, or even the aromatic rings. So you can do some hydrogen bondings and pi pi interaction. So that's why this is actually, so to say, this works in this case of in the case of the tetracycline absorption for my material. Why? Because the material contains a lot, a lot of oxygen functionality. Yeah, and later, so I, I, I don't show you the paper that I, I just found recently. So after I published this kind of work, so they, uh, there was the other one who actually published the work uh, with actually, so they tried to control the oxygen amount of the absorbent surface of the common surface, and they found later that okay, if they have if they reduce the amount of oxygen, so they can even absorb a lower amount of the of the theta secret that they need in that case. Okay, let's move to the um, comparison table here. Yeah. Why I, I like the comparison table here a lot because so I put this one also into the paper. And so one reviewer asked me, oh, let's see here, your value is really quite low. Uh, the value of the absorption and the value of the kinetics compared to the other works, if you, if you notice here, so you would see that it's not, it's not that high, right? It's, it's really, really small. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you, you consider here, right? The QE value and you consider the K value, which means you refer to the kinetics. So that means how fast. And you refer to QE, so that means how much you can absorb at the maximum. Yeah. If you can notice here, so my value is not, so to say, not, not so bad compared to the other. Right? But if you compare to the activated carbons, which actually derive, derive from the sodium hydroxide activation, so they can achieve the value higher than 400 
milligram per gram of the tetracycline as option. So it seems to be quite a lot, right? But if you consider the surface area here, uh, and if you normalize with the surface area instead of gram, you will get you will see that the value that obtained in my work it's really much higher than the one which actually um, come from the activate activation. Uh, sorry, the activating acti activated carbon. Yeah. If you compare with the surface, um, um, normalize with the surface, you get really high value in our sample. So that means in one square meter, so we can absorb the data screen more than one milligram. Even we have really low surface. If you notice here, the surface area in our case is only four, 43 compared to the, the one, this one is really 1,500. It's really quite a lot. But okay, in, in, in general, so the QE value is much higher, yes? But when you normalize with the surface area, it's much lower than ours. So that means we can conclude here that the magnetic carbon composite prepared in our work, okay, it possesses low surface area and low porosity because the surface area is maximum just up to about 50 or 40. But the absorption capacity is, is not bad. If you compare to the, to the other sample, uh, 48 is it, acceptable, I would say. And okay, much lower than sodium hydroxide activate, activated carbon. So that means now the porosity play no clear effect. So that means you don't need the material which actually contain a lot of surface area for absorption. If you have suitable surface functionality, yeah. In this case, chemical functionality is quite important. Yeah. I just want to stress here that you don't need to have high surface area, but you have to make sure that your sample have available active absorption size to attach the polluted molecule with the specific interaction. Yeah. Okay, this is the example. But okay, still, we still have the problem because if we want to, to sell to the company, companies still say, okay, you still have low, uh, uh, low surface area so you can improve to absorb a lot of um, uh, atom molecule as well. And we found later that, okay, our, our absorbent um, doesn't work well with the other uh, pollutant like methylene blue, are like other dyes. So it, it is specific only for the, for the data cycle, which has a, a lot of hydrogen bonding. Yeah. If you play with the other ions molecules, like uh, methylene blue or methylene orange, so it, it, it really doesn't work quite well. So that means it, it, uh, it's still the question what actually happened and what kind of functionality we need in this case. Okay, the example two, okay. In this case, we care about the surface area. So we published this work together with a guy from uh, UK and we get a um, uh, scholarship from the Newton Fund. And actually in this work, so I like this work a lot because so we prepare it from, from what? From the disgusting weeds. So they mean that we started from water hyacinth, <laughs> okay? And we do the same. So we do the, the, the um, we usually we use the, uh, this kind of water hyacinth just for the handicraft product, we actually have the, the, the low value. So we try to turn into two things. We use it to make the supercapacitor, the carbon as well, carbon-based material as well, and we turn it into a super absorbent. I will show you, I, will t I, I, I must say here that it's super absorbent. Why we call it super absorbent? And in this case, but you have to keep in mind a little bit that um, in this case, so we don't do the uh, direct hydrothermal carbonization, but
but we get the hydro char after hydrothermal carbonization and we do activating agent uh, and we put the activating agent KOH a little bit into the sample uh, plus the iron because we need the magnetic property and we need to activate to, to get the higher surface area as well. And this sample contain the surface area up to 3,000. Uh, sorry, uh, up to 1,000. Uh, so it means quite high, right? And we try to absorb these three things. So methane, methylene blue, methane orange, and theta cycling. So why we shoot these three um, species for the absorption? Because methylene blue represents the positive charge molecule, and methane orange represents the negative charge molecules. Why theta cycling represents the molecule which actually contain a lot of, a lot of um, oxygen functionality groups, okay? But we see that there are no significant difference for the absorption among these three um, absorbed molecules. And we can see that the amount that actually this species can absorb can be quite high, so up to 500 square meter, uh, sorry, milligram per gram of methylene blue and about 400 and 300 for methylene orange and theta second respectively, which seem to be quite high, right? What the reason for the high absorption capacity and also not only the high absorption capacity, but also very fast absorption, even we put the concentration of the methylene blue, methylene orange as a kid at high level. So that means the um, concentration that we put into this is higher than 500 ppm. So that means you will get something like a, well, a really dark blue methylene blue solution, for example. It can absorb a lot of this high concentration of methylene blue, methylene orange, theta cycling, even in about two hours. Yeah, you can see it's completely clear afterwards. Uh, after 20 minutes, so we can actually observe a little bit that okay, it started to absorb already. Uh, the reason for this is not because of functionality, but it's because you have super large surface area at mesoporosity. Because these three compounds are uh, considered to be quite big compared to the other species, okay? When you have large surface area and mesoporosity, so it can absorb quite a lot. And interaction is not related to the oxygen functionality in this sample anymore. Otherwise, you will have different, totally uh, significant different of absorption of methylene blue compared to methylene orange and theta cycling. But in this sample, so it, uh, the sample can, add, the absorbent can absorb all kind of the molecule in this case, even it has a negative charge, positive charge, or no charge at all. So that means it's used always the same mechanism to absorb these three kind of things, okay? But this would be also quite interesting. Even you have no, um, so to say, no, uh, specific interaction, but you you don't care if you sell this product to the company. The company say, okay, I don't care. I just need uh, it to be far to absorb things. Okay, so we can conclude that another effect which actually influence absorption efficiency is directly related to high surface area and power loom. Okay. But in this case, functionality is not responsible. Uh, it's it's in contract in the in the first example. Okay, the last example. Uh, now we look at the pore morphology or the type of the pores. Uh, you know the activity carbon or chiasorbin need to have pores. Why they need to have pores? Usually people like pores because people say that okay, if you have a lot of pores. If you have a lot of um, uh, surface area, so you can have there many area to absorb the molecule, right? 
I show in this work and I'm very proud to, to present this kind of work because it kind of deep study in, in inside that not always that the sample which actually contain the high surface area has to be good at solving. Yeah. I will show you what we what what we did in this work. So we do kind of cell assembly onto our sugarcane bagasi, and so we coat because we want to make it miso pores. Yeah. Usually, if you just take the sugarcane bagasi and burn in the oven or do activation you will get only the specific type of micropores. Usually you will get the micropores. In this case, we do some coating effect. We need also to uh, like a monolith shape. And then so we can entrap the mesopore in, onto the surface of sugarcane bagasi. And then so we calcine afterward. And the other one we call it non-templating. Non-templating means we also coated with the, um, the same species of the resin that we coat on, and then so we calcine also, but we will get only the micropores, okay? Yeah. The uh, first sample, we have the mesopore, right? The second sample, we have only the mesopores, okay? And this, uh, how the sample look? Uh, the bakasi and after coating, so it turned red, and after calcination, it still contains the same shape, but it um, reduces in, in size a little bit, but still in the same shape and turn black. So it means we, we really get the carbon. So we look at the MTM, so we see that, okay, we, we get a successful coating, all right? We, uh, I try to, to be quite fast with this. And we check the visual pore distribution from the nitrogen sorption technique. And we found that, okay, what we coated on our sugarcane bagasi show mesoporosity of about 5.5 nanometer in size. Okay. And from this table, so might look a little bit complicated to you. And I will just show you some example. If you notice the BET surface here, if you notice the BET surface here, you will see that some sample, for example, the BG800A contain the surface area of about 500. The BGPGF800 also contain very high surface area of 600, right? Yeah. And if you compare to the micropore and the mesopore fraction, you will see that they are really different. Even you have 400, 600, 600 for some sample, for example, here and here, you expect, what you expect? You expect very high adsorption, right? But what we found later for this kind of sample, we found that they don't really absorb the molecule that we put in at all. Now, it's quite strange to me what happened in that case and what happened. So we draw the scheme, okay? We, we make also the first, uh, the experiment for the kinetics and also, of course, for the, for the equilibrium. And we found that for the kinetic, it's not really fast. It's about two days, I would say. But this is, this is really normal for the monolith things, for the big particles of, of the adsorption. But if you have powder, it would be quite fast, right? Okay, let's see here. HPC 2.5 800A on the top row. Uh, this is the base sample that, that we have. It contains surface area of only 400 square meter per gram. Why the lower one, the two lower one, is contains surface area of 600 square meter per gram. But if you see here, after the time pass, this get at all. So we put the methylene blue inside, but why the other two doesn't absorb at all, even you leave it for one week. But it's really in contrast to your, open, to, to, to your intu intuition in, in, at the beginning, because you have quite high surface area, higher than this one by 200, right? 
but you expect that this you have to absorb a lot but it it does it is not like that it's in contrast to your opinion it's in your contrast in, in your expectation right okay why we can draw from the from the um uh, all the conclusion here we can actually consider that okay it also can absorb methane already in the same way it can absorb glutamine b in the same way so amount of the methylene blue absorption and methane orange absorption in terms of millimole is not different not so much uh, so that means that the uh, this is not because of the shot effect uh, or with the other interaction surface effect but can be from the size right and the, and then so we can actually conclude from here from from the statistic analysis of our we can conclude that the absorption mechanism has nothing to do with the BET surface area, but it has a big thing related to the pore side effect, or we can call it the pore exclusion effect. Yeah. So we can draw the last diagram here that, okay, if you have non-templating material which contain the surface area of up to 600 square meter per gram but the pore is really small for the molecule to enter you lose but if you have the template molecule which actually have the suitable meso pore size even you have the surface area of 400 square meter per gram it show higher efficiency, right? So that this mean we can actually conclude here that yeah, from this all comparison table that high surface area and power loom might not be always responsible for the high absorption capacity and fast kinetic, but the power mobility and the power size can be responsible for the absorption mechanism through the pore exclusion effect yeah this is what actually we found so that means if we have the sample with very high surface area of up to 2000 but your pores are too small to absorb molecule will never work okay so in the last conclusion so we can conclude that what actually influence the absorption efficiency for our novel biomass derived carbon would be the first one, surface functionality, of course. The second, it has to contain high surface area and power volume. Yeah. And the effect of power morphology and pore size, very important. And the last thing that I don't talk in this uh, presentation is the other environmental effect like pH, interference, temperature, particle size of your absorption, and so on. I just show some example of this. That, um, if we can tune these kind of parameters, so we can actually expect to get the better efficiency with the specific molecule that we need, right? Okay. Yeah. Last one, so I just want to thank some of my students who actually uh, work a lot in the lab and then so um, get this useful um, uh, uh, information to, to share with you now. And then so of course, I mean, have to thank uh, Fatima for her invitation as always, and uh, thanks the funding and support that actually support our lab a lot. And thanks our collaboration. Yeah, if you notice here, so we have collaboration at the last one as a UAI, right? Okay. And of course, I mean, thank you. Okay, 